Democrats know that we give tax breaks to millionaires, or when we give tax breaks to millionaires, it does not trickle down, and it does not create jobs. Fair wages create a strong, small local business environment and protect our workers. A vibrant and healthy economy has as its <coughs> cornerstone an affordable health care system for working families and good paying wages for its workers. House Joint Resolution 6, tying the state minimum wage to inflationary rate, contributes to this process and is a step forward in kind of adding to that vibrant, healthy environment in terms of economic development. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'm going to invite Dory Gallegos to talk about the House Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm off, I'm off track. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Senator Bill Souls from Las Cruces. Yeah. <laughs> Another uh, representative from Las Cruces. I'm very pleased today to announce, along with uh, Senator Martinez, that in the Senate we will introduce legislation for a statewide minimum wage of $8.50 an hour. Thank you, Senator Souls. Senator Souls and I have uh, uh, gotten together to introduce this, this particular piece of legislation because we feel that uh, raising the minimum wage is a, is a matter of basic human decency. People who work uh, for a living should be able to meet their own their very basic needs. I represent a very uh, 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 underprivileged uh, district, which is District 5, and I think that this is very important to uh, my constituents in my district. I think that raising the minimum wage does not automatically lift low-income people out of poverty, but it eases their struggle to afford uh, basic needs like food and shelter. Uh, even the prospect of a small increase uh, can add meaning and dignity to low, uh, low wage labor. And believe me, uh, when uh, we uh, started off with uh, Indian gaming, it was a big boost up in, uh, in northern New Mexico. And, uh, and we need to bring that minimum wage up more for our, for our people so that they can live decent lives. Uh, you know, uh, I just hope and I'd like to challenge uh, Governor Martinez that if she doesn't sign this particular piece of legislation, I'd like for her to try and uh, and uh, pay herself $7.50 an hour for two months and see if she can survive. Uh, this is basically what we're asking for, it's just survival. We just want people to be able to buy the basic needs and to be able to survive at a decent salary. Eight fifty dollars is not even as, as much as I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it higher, but I think that this is a start and I think that we're we're going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, in, we're going to go ahead and pass the bill, and I challenge Governor Martinez to sign it. Thank you. I would just like to add that at the current minimum wage, that provides about fifteen thousand dollars a year. With this, it would up that to approximately seventeen thousand dollars a year. That is still at about the federal poverty rate. This would increase the amount of money in a family budget by about forty dollars a week to buy groceries. We know that the majority of people who are on minimum wage are adults and the majority of them have children and they're trying to support their families on this. This is a bill that supports families. It helps raise people up out of poverty, which we know is a major contributor to poor education outcomes. Some estimates indicate that it would produce approximately $67 million in additional consumer spending because Primary economics tells us that all of these dollars immediately get turned back into the economy because these people are spending that money the next day. It doesn't go out of state, it stays right in our economy. And all of that is going to be good for New Mexico. It is my pleasure to introduce my representative, Doreen Gallegos from Las Cruces. today, but what's even better is that I'm here with so many of my freshman colleagues and uh, so many of our, our more seasoned legislators who have paved the way for us. And part of what we are, we're going to be talking about today is that we still have to address issues of inequality. That is why as a collective group, all Democratic women in the House have signed 
and have co-sponsored, along with Representative Egoff, Bill 216, the Fair Pay for Women Act. This is the New Mexico version of the Lilly Ledbetter Act. <laughs> Democrats are committed to equality in pay and will not accept or tolerate discrimination for any reason, let alone somebody's gender. Women are often the sole breadwinners for their families, or they have an increasing role in providing resources for their families and their financial needs. Like the minimum wage, there is pay, there, when there is pay equality, the money is reinvested right back into local communities. And for us, that means to put into our children's lunch boxes, to pay the electric bill, and to meet the basic needs of our families. And I know for me, that's what is important to New Mexicans. House Bill 216 prohibits an employer from discriminating against an employee based on uh, gender. This bill would specifically provide female employees <coughs> remedies beyond what is currently allowed under the Human Rights Act by awarding unpaid wages from the date of the violation to the date of filing the claim, as well as punitive damages. Democrats support equality for all. This includes advancing women's issues. Uh, women have very specific issues that are close to our hearts, and Democrats have opposed, have opposed the war on women's health choices, but we will not stop there. Democrats are prepared to fight for a woman's right to fair pay. Democrats believe that social justice and equality are good for all economy and create jobs.